But real quick, I want to cover 2.1 because there's a few things that I didn't talk about last time that I think we should get, need to get across pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So we know there's a new standard, and the standard is basically because of the bandwidth requirements. You can get a lot of the audio stuff, a lot of the gaming stuff, and a lot of user experience stuff could have been done with, with, minimum with a minimal increase in bandwidth. It's just that when you add 8K content and you add 120 frames per second to run these types of systems, these game systems and things like that, the bandwidth is massive. Um, and that is why you had to go, you need a new standard to go from 18 gigabits per second, which is the bandwidth, up to a maximum of, like we said, 48. So 48 is the maximum bandwidth of this new 2.1 specification, which you won't see 2.1. You'll see ultra, ultra high speed or people will put the speed of their particular receivers and processors on them. So you're probably to see ultra, ultra high speed or support for 8K 60, 4K 120. But 48 is the maximum. And I and um, LG got beat up a little bit over um, the fact that someone said, wow, it only does 40. Well, there's some things we got to talk about. And I want people to really understand this is people get obsessed with big numbers, but a lot of times you don't get much more. Um, this, let's talk reality. The panels that are in an OLED or an LCD or 99% of computer monitors are 10-bit panels. There are no consumer 12-bit TVs, period, okay? There's one manufacturer that makes a 12-bit um, projector. They say their panel, their image is a 12-bit, which is JVC, but they aren't doing 8K and they aren't doing 120 frames per second. So the, anything that's going to be doing 8K or 4K 120 is a 10-bit device, all right? Now, if I take 4K 120 at 10-bit with 444 sampling, it's 40 gigabits per second. Oh, by the way, 444 is just how many times you sample the color, and 10-bit is the number you assign the color that has been sampled, all right? Um, if I look at 8K 24, I'm a movie guy. If you're not, if you're not a gamer... You, people don't like high, um, ultra high frame rate movies. Our, um, directors keep trying, but we seem to like our movies at 24. It has this cinematic look. And if I crank the movie to, to 8K, 24 frames per second, 10 bit, 444, the maximum that that panel can support, the number is 40. If I go to 4, 8K, 60, there is no 10 bit, 444 standard for uncompressed for 8K60. It uses a 420 color space. And the maximum number, drum roll please, is 40. So to get the maximum from the TV is 40. The next thing is, the gaming consoles, you can crank them up to 12 bits and all that type of stuff, but the gaming consoles also have a HDMI board in them. And the boards that they're gonna be using can support four channels at 10 gigabits per second. And that includes high in gaming cards and high in gaming consoles, which means, the same 40. So if the input is 40, th what comes out of the source is only going to be at a maximum 40. And the TV can't do more than, it, than, than um, uh, display you more than what you would get from 40. The actual speed limit that you need to truly be concerned with right now for the next several years is actually 40. Mm -hmm. if, a custom, if, if a TV manufacturer makes 48, that's great. But you have to ask yourself, if the TV can accept 40, and you're doing 48. That means you made a one-off video processing circuitry board, not buying the <laughs> ones that are available, which meant you increased the cost of the TV um, to give you the 40 number. Instead of giving you a better backlight system, a better video processor, a better cabinet, or better speakers. So to me, um, you got to think about that type of stuff. Are they really TV manufacturers try to utilize the money the best way they possibly can and yeah. going out and randomly just throwing in 48 because the number looks good may not have been the would not probably be the best business decision when they can utilize um, that to give you better performance someplace else. All right. So a question for you on the 8K um, capability. Is it every HDMI input is 8K or is it oh, limited to? We'll talk about that in a second. Um, okay. The, the, the next thing that we want to up, did I get cut off? There we go here. Switch. Oh, my thing is acting up. Oh, there we go. Come back. Of course, my computer went away. The, uh, the, the one thing I wanted to get to, and of course, my computer is acting up. Let me unplug and plug it back in. I want to talk about we have an HDMI diagnostics tool. Yes. And the HDMI diagnostics tool um, will allow you to, there we go. Let's go back here. We've always had one. The old one supported um, the old one supported up to 18. 
The new one supports up to 40 because that's what the chip in the receiver does. Um, but guess what? That means all you can get out of your game system, the only sources that are going to be available, and all you can get out of that you can get your TV can maximize and display. So you can test your cables and all of your switches and stuff up to the maximum that modern displays can actually utilize. OK, and it's um, it's so basically it's the same type of process. Oh, and by the way, the only other way to um, to test this is with a seven, a Neridio 7G, which costs about five thousand dollars. So the fact that we're including this in a res in our receiver, starting with the twenty seven hundred is pretty freaking powerful. All right. Yeah. So, so you basically just so you guys understand, you um, you buy these receivers and you could literally do an HDMI diagnostic on all your cables before you install them. I mean, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. That's really yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of a lot of any integrators are probably just gonna use a dinner receiver because it's cheaper to take to buy a dinner receiver to test all their cables than to buy any third party signal tester that's available on the market. Think about that. How much is the Jake? How much and is the twenty seven hundred? I was just gonna say this goes from the sixty seven top of the line all the way down to the twenty seven hundred, which is at eight forty nine. So, eight forty nine. So yeah, you, you can, can buy a dinner receiver yeah, yeah. for eight forty nine. Or you could buy a seven thousand dollar test pattern generator to test your cables. Very <laughs> slick. Very slick. I mean, come come on, come on. It's it's pretty powerful. So yep. let's look at the back of this thing, because you were asking. So mm -hmm. this is actually the back of the sixty seven hundred, um, and like I said, it has uh, thirteen speaker outputs. I mean, it has like your your optional different types of heights and everything else, and then you have your multiple um, all of your your. I mean, it has eleven speaker terminals and thirteen pre-outs, all right? You can use 11 at a time of the terminals that are available. If you look at the HDMI board, the HDMI boards, the way they work out is like this. There is eight in, like say if you move, depending on what you buy, the amount of HDMIs that are NZs and outsies increase. So if I go to the 47 and the 67, I get eight ins, including one front input and three outputs, a zone two, as well as um, two uh outs for your main theater there's one 40 gigabit per second hdmi input and two um 40 gigabit per, bit per second 8k hdmi outputs so one in 8k and two outs that are 8k now so in, in, the, in the in the conceivable future when i have my flying car that you keep talking about mm -hmm. and we have more than one source that does 8k you don't necessarily have to ditch this receiver because we'll have eARC. And exactly. you can plug those AK sources into your display and still transmit the audio back to the AVR. Exactly. So that's what people say. Why is eARC so important? And make sure you get good cables because um, you can start off doing this. You can start off with either, say you have a, um, say you have the, the first 8K movie um, content is probably going to be internal applications because Sony, Samsung, LG are probably going to sponsor some footage that they can actually display. And you're going to need to send the audio to the receiver via eARC to get the uncompressed audio. If you end up with a way more, there's only two op, two two sources. And worst comes to worst, you plug one in the TV and one into the uh, directly into the AVR and you use eARC. So no, you won't have to ditch this receiver. So this receiver will live in the in the system for a long, long time. But the main thing we have to remember is, is all those other features that we talk about when it comes to um, HDMI, um, HDMI 2.1, that whether you have an 8K TV or not, give you benefit, dynamic HDR, um, HDR10+, Dolby Vision, variable refresh rate, quick media switching, all the stuff we've talked about before, Gene. So you guys mm -hmm. who have a, you don't know that should go check out those other earlier sessions. Now, all the inputs support that. Okay, so while there's only one 8K input to support the high bandwidth of 40, all the other inputs support all of those other enhancements, variable refresh rate, quick media switching, all that stuff. Okay, and all of the other inputs, the other seven inputs can be upscaled from HD or 4K up to 8K you inside, um, using the TV's internal upscaling. Yeah, you guys are you're really getting a high end HDMI switcher with these receivers. We oh, yeah. did uh we did a three part HDMI two point one um presentation on YouTube over the last couple of weeks, and you guys, I'll link them up in the description. You guys should definitely check that out. Phil just poured out the technology, man. We did like three forty five minute presentations on it, so all that information is there. I don't want to rehash too much exactly. of it here. 
Yeah, I'm just trying to cover some of the newer stuff. So, so for example, these are the backs. So if you look at the back, this is the back of a 6700. And you'll see that there's um, a total of seven inputs on the back, and then there's one on the front for a total of eight, right? One of the seven numbers um, ha is labeled 8K. That's the input that will um, handle the higher bandwidth. Then you have your zone two, and then you have your two outputs, your monitor one and your monitor two for your TV and your projector in your main room. Um, that is what you're going to see. When uh, when we upgrade to 8500, it's going to go from the X8500H to the X8500HA. And basically, the, the, the sticker below is what it will look like on the back of that receiver. If you buy, if you already have an 8500 or you buy one right now and you decide you want to send that receiver off for the upgrade, when they replace the board, um, uh, you will also, they will also replace the sticker so you know, um, so it matches. So basically, it's the same board. And by the time the board is ready to be, um, uh, for the upgrade, it's about the same time that the ones with the, the board already in it will be hitting stores. Nice. That's slick. So I wanted to just do a quick follow-up. We got a confirmation from Denon Engineering that when you do put it in preamp mode, it automatically switches to eco on. So okay. you're consuming less power. That's that's good to hear. And then the 8500 ha does have auto switching capability for the 15 channel configuration. Awesome, awesome. So oh, I want to beat you up. I want to be. I want to beat you up on something first. Uh -huh. <laughs> because I, it looks like you're still putting those little stickers on the front of your receivers where you boast, unre uh, you know, real, mm -hmm. unrealistic power um, cons yeah. power numbers. This is a one channel driven six yeah. ohm 10 percent. Yeah. The reality yeah. is it's 140 watts. Yeah. So or let's, 100... let's, let's, let's talk about that. Um, yeah. uh, unfortunately, like you guys know that, but mm -hmm. if you walk into a retail store and, ev and everybody else has the big number and they aren't educated, they walk right by the other receivers. So if they put that one channel driven number on it, in order to be honestly competitive, we have to. But Jake, can you talk about the guarantee? I think we have like a guarantee thing coming yeah. up. Can you yes. explain that? Definitely. So we have a seven channel guarantee. So that makes sure that, or I'm sorry, a 70% uh, guarantee on that. So across all the channels on that board, we're going to guarantee that you're able to hit 70% at bare minimum across, um, say, for example, on the uh, 6700 that will come out. We posted at 140. So this guarantees 70 percent um power guaranteed uh five channel driven yeah so yeah. if you so yeah because we have to um you guys know that and we'll make and we'll like you said and, and we know reviewers are going to check it we know that you guys are going to say exactly what all channels driven are um though it will be listed in the um in the documents and we'll give you the 70 percent guarantee but the fact is that sticker on the front of that receiver is to make somebody excited about that product and if they see the big number and everybody else, there's not someone there at a normal Best Buy store or a normal retailer to tell them that that is that, oh, the, the, the Denon is measuring all channels driven while the fill in the blank is not. So, yeah. um, you know what I mean? So we have to be, so yes, we will be honest with you that that does not mean all the channels are being driven at the same time, but that is a marketing thing you're going to peel off because you know exactly what the number is going to be. And you know, yeah, and, and you know, all of the Denon and Marantz receivers that I've reviewed, because I do measure all channels driven up to seven channels, I've I've been able to confirm that you guys actually meet that 70% power rating with actually up to seven channels driven from my testing, yes. especially with the, the SR8012, for example, exceeded that because it has a really big power supply. Exactly. If you look at the 8500, the power transformer in the 8500 weighs the same as an X1600 receiver. Mm -hmm. So we go out of our way to try to give you as much current to give you as much power on all of your channels. Okay. But at the yeah. same time, um, we are, we have to sell receivers mm -hmm. to, to people who are not as informed as and, the audio holic team. And Phil right. and Gene, uh, I think a great point to put to that is those stickers that you see that when you're looking through the shelves going on the market, we've actually taken those down from these astronomically high numbers. Like, 260 watts that are for one channel driven so um now they are at a more reasonable usually around like the two channel with the thd at like or i'm sorry eight ohms with a thd at like oh uh 0.05 to make it more realistic for the consumer to yeah. take it 
Yeah. So uh, it's not one time before it yeah. blows up power that's listed under. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not your one. While and it's driving a square <laughs> wave. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Now there was one more thing I wanted to point out before before we leave too. And one more point that's important. We talk about the value of these things being built in. And Gene, you mentioned that this receiver is almost like a test pattern generator built in. And I said, you know, you could buy an eight thousand dollar, seven thousand dollar generator. Meridio makes a great five to six thousand dollar generator. It's called a seven G. It's a great piece. Um, but most customers aren't going to buy that. Now, the next thing is we have all this bandwidth stuff, but there's all these other cool features coming through HDMI 2.1. But not all TVs support all of the features and not Mm. all sources output all of the features. So how do you know if I connect these two devices, what is can be supported by both devices? Well, remember, the receiver is a repeater. It's between the source, your game system and the sync, which is your display. So it could actually read that information. So the new Minsk, menu, I can't show you this right now because there is no device that exists right now, but mm-hmm. um, except for high-end test pattern generators. But I can actually go in, and if I hit the info button, it'll tell me if it's HDMI. I mean, what type of HDMI? What type of Dolby Vision? I mean, what type of HDR? Is it HDR10, Dolby Vision, HLG, HDR10, or the new dynamic HDR, which is part of the 2.1 standard? It'll give me my resolutions. And up to, you know, is it, 4, is it 4K 120, is it 8K 24, is it 8K 60? Or remember, game systems use variable refresh rate. So there is no 8K 24, it's 8K VRR, which means the refresh rate, refresh rate is changing. So by just hitting the menu system, instead of having to buy a test pattern generator or hope the TV is not going to show you this stuff, the, 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 I guarantee you the source is not going to show you this stuff because we can read the signal going through us. We can provide you with that information. 